Hi there, welcome to this tutorial on JSP in 28 minutes. This tutorial is part of a series of videos where we were learning how to develop your first Java web application. We started with your first Java web application in video 1. We went to servlets in 28 minutes in video 2. And this is the third video where we are looking at JSP. In the videos after this, we will look at JST, expression language, and we will look at a real world Java application. See how things like form validation, exception handling, and other kind of things are done. In this video, let's focus on JSP. We'll first understand the architecture of a JSP. How does a JSP really work? Next, we would move on to the basics of JSP. We would look at things like JSP implicit objects. We'll create a small JSP form and we'll look at a few JSP good practices before we end this tutorial. Let's get started with the section one, which is JSP architecture. At the fundamental level, JSP is a servlet. A JSP also finally compiles to a servlet. So even though we write a JSP in here, the ultimate result of a JSP is another servlet file. What would happen is Java would internally convert this first dot JSP into something like a first hyphen servlet dot some Java and finally it compiles to a first hyphen servlet dot class. So effectively a JSP is nothing but another servlet. Then the question is, why do we need a JSP? In the first versions of Java, what was being done? This kind of HTML code is directly put into the servlet. So we used to have a number of request dot get writer dot println and this. All this content was printed out using request dot get writer. This kind of a code ended up being very unmaintainable. Because printing out HTML from a Java code is not very easy. That is the reason why JSPs were introduced. JSPs are more the view technology. So the view is something which is rendered in the browser. And JSPs make it easy to write HTML. So you write a lot of HTML and insert a little bit of Java in between or a little bit of tag libraries in between. First thing is JSP is a servlet. But JSP is a servlet which is making writing your view very easy. Next thing is the JSP lifecycle. As I said earlier, JSP is compiled to a Java code. So the first step in a JSP lifecycle is JSP gets compiled to a Java class. So first thing is this needs to be converted and created as a Java class. So that's the first step. And the next step is the execution. And the last step as with any other Java class is destruction. If I have an application, a ER, with a lot of JSPs, then sometimes the startup might take a long time because these JSPs need to be converted to a lot of Java files and compiled. Usually, it is preferred that this is done during the application server start. Otherwise, your first request to a particular view will be slow because it would involve compilation phase as well. So you have two options. Either you can compile the JSPs at the server load time itself. So when you are starting the server, server, you can compile all the 100 JSPs. You can compile them when the first request for that particular JSP is received. Usually, the preferred approach would be to compile all the JSPs at server startup itself. Let's move on to the basics of JSP. We'll understand what we mean by scriptlets, what we mean by expressions, and how do you write comments in a JSP? Let's get started with scriptlet. Scriptlet is nothing but a Java code which is written in JSP. The first warning, writing scriptlets in JSP is generally considered very bad practice. So as much as possible, avoid writing scriptlets in JSP. That warning aside, let's learn what is a script. Scriptlet is nothing but some Java code that you write in a JSP. A scriptlet starts with this particular thing, less than symbol, percentage, percentage, less than symbol. You write your Java code in between these scriptlets. So the, whatever your code which you write in here is called a scriptlet. You can write Java code in here. There are certain things called implicit objects which are available in the JSP. We will discuss about that a little later. One of the implicit objects which is present is out. I can use out to print something to the output. So I can say out.println something is print. When I launch localhost 8080 slash first, I see whatever I have written in here. So whatever I have printed from out.println is going into this. This is nothing but Java code. I can do something of this kind. I declared a variable and I'm doing out.println value of i is i. And when you refresh the page, you'd see that value of i phi is printed to the page. This is where you can write a lot of Java. One thing 
which might be interesting is how do you import let's say i would want to use a date class here how do i use a date class in here because date class in a java.util.package one option is i can say java.util.date and use it but is there a way i can import it the import statement in jsp is written at the start of the page and it starts with the syntax like less than percentage and at red symbol and page import is equal to whichever classes you would want to import i'm trying to import java.util.date and java.util.list this is called a jsp directive a jsp directive this is the import directive so i'm trying to import this class so now i can make use of the date class now i can do an out.println new date.toString and so let's see if this is printed to the output you can see that the date is printed to the output this date and time and the fact that i'm in it those are the important things about scriptlets in summary scriptlet is nothing but java code that you write in a jsp you write it between a less than percentage and a percentage greater than symbols and imports in a jsp are done using the page jsp directive you can import classes like date list and everything else using the import that next we will learn about expressions jsp expression instead of doing out.println jsp expressions help you to easily do the out.println so let's say i want to print something to the output all that i need to do is use this kind of an expression so it's less than percentage is equal to and closing thing is exactly the same as the script so between this if i put a this is called an expression so i'll remove this now let's run the same there's no change out change in output because this is now work let's create a variable here let's say i'm creating a string str is equal to my or just say str is equal to such i can print the value here so you can say str you can see that such an is printed to the output that's jsp expression first thing which we looked at was scriptlet the next thing which we looked at is expression the last thing which we will be looking at is comments there are two kinds of jsp comments one is this one and the other comment looks something like this this is with a percentage and this is with an exclamation there is a small difference between these two comments let's run this program let's run this jsp and let's go to a right click view source you can see that this comment is printed in the view source so this comment goes to the browser so whatever you put in the exclamation comment it is shown on the browser so if you write any comment about the logic in this particular way then the comment will be visible to the user so if people do a view search they can look at the comment however when you do this kind of comment the comment will not be sent to the browser so the user on the web application will not know that you have a comment like that in the jsp usually it is preferred to use this kind of a comment because the comment doesn't go and the load on the server is little lesser that's the end of section 2 where we looked at the basics of jsp the next thing we will look at are jsp implicit objects in a jsp these four objects are available even without declaration what do we mean here we declared a variable called str in a jsp by default these four variables are available without us declaring it one example was the out.println so the out is a implicit variable we didn't declare out anywhere in here so nowhere in this particular jsp we declared something called out that's why it's called an implicit object the implicit objects are available even without declaring them using the implicit object out we were able to write something to the page there are other implicit objects which are used to get information from the request i'm using the request implicit object and i'm printing the parameter name parameter name to the object what we'll also do to the first let's pass a parameter so let's say parameter name is equal to dummy value you see that dummy value comes in whatever value was passed as a parameter we we use the request implicit object to get the parameter value and print it to the page similarly there is a response implicit object and a session implicit using the session implicit object you can get values from the session and the response implicit object can be used to write things to a response let's say i want to set some header on a response i can do that using the response implicit object okay those are the jsp implicit objects let's now move on to creating a simple jsp what are you are seeing on the screen right now is a very simple example of a jsp form you'd see that we are using a form method is equal to post this is a form which uses a post method to send the data and we have a input type is equal to email and we have a input type is equal to password and the action which it sends to is login so let's go ahead and run this so when i say login it brings up this form 
So that's email, password and the submit button. Email, password and the submit button. We can use the latest HTML5 things like placeholders. Let's say your email, your password and then we have placeholders. So as long as it, I don't type anything, it would show the placeholder. So it would show up and when I enter in something, it would disappear. What happens is when I type in user at google.com and password and click the submit button, it goes to the first page of the first page of the application. And if I enter a wrong password or something, then it comes up and shows with an error message. So it shows invalid ID and password. If you want to show the previous user ID and password which was entered, what we can do is we can use the I'll set the value and the way to get it is request dot get parameter email so if there is anything in the previous email it would show it here as value and the same let's do it now let's log in again you can see that it's showing null since this is null the value on the screen is coming up as null and that's why it's better to go for a expression language if, if expression hand, language handles nulls much better so i would say request scope dot email we'll learn a little bit more about expression language very soon so request scope click login by default it shows your email your password and now i can go and type in user at google.com and i'll enter a wrong password and you'd see that we come back with the message invalid id and password but the user id and the password values are written so what we did was we made use of an expression language expression expression language expression use uh, handles nulls very grace we created a small form we did a little bit of validation on it and we were able to retain the values of it. In the last video of this tutorial, we'll really look at a real world example. Until then, let this be your initial form and we'll learn a lot about forms very soon. Next, we would move on to the JSP good practices. Most important things about JSP is you should not write any business logic in a JSP. It is considered very bad practice to write any scriptlets in a JSP. At the worst case, use a expression. Avoid writing any scriptlets in the JSP. All the business logic should be written in the servlet and not in the JSP. So, if you have some processing to do, do it in the servlet, set it as an attribute in the request or in the bean and send it to the JSP. Do not write logic in the JSP. That's basically, do not treat JSP as another servlet. JSP is a view, so only do the view things in the JSP. Just because JSP is a servlet, you should not do all the things that are allowed in a servlet. Like you can add a filter on a JSP. I mean, that defeats the entire purpose of having a JSP completely. You should not do any forwarding from a JSP. All the forwarding should be done from a servlet. Things like connecting to a database, things like doing XML processing in a JSP, they should be avoided at all means. An ideal JSP would contain just tags and would look almost like HTML. A JSP should not use Java code as much as possible. So, those are the good practices when it comes to writing JSP. Now, we are at the end of video 3, JSP in 28 minutes. In the next videos, we'll look at JSTL, expression language, and build your first real world Java.